everybody, and welcome to Courtside at Nashua High School North. I'm John Collins with Tom King. We're just moments away from tip-off. It's South versus North girls basketball. We'll be doing the second half of doubleheader with the boys later. Tom, uh, again, you look on the uh, in the standings. There appears to be a little bit of a mismatch here, maybe. Well, you know, John, it's funny. This game was postponed because of a storm a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Had yeah. the game been playing then, it might not have been as much of a mismatch. North just hasn't been uh, South just hasn't been able to get going. They've lost seven in a row. Yeah. Watch out for their top score number five. Jocelyn should put. They need offense from her, and they need to spread the wealth a little bit to be able to match North. Just the opposite situation that the Titans had when they were playing Girton. Girton was not a good matchup for them. South is. Hey, and, I, and I think that's going to be a big deal tonight. Thanks for mentioning Jocelyn Chaput. We are going to have a treat in this game. We have two 1,000-point career scorers in high school that's basketball. Right. Chaput and Sarah Cordova for Nashua North. That's Tom King. I'm John Collins. We'll have the opening tip-off coming up on Nashua TV right after this. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the peril of us fight o'er the And welcome to Nashua High School North. Scene of tonight's Battle of the Bridge game, girls and boys basketball. It will be the 8 and 6 North girls against the 5 and 11 South team. For, unfortunately for the Panthers of Nashua South, they've lost seven games in a row coming into this contest, including most recently a loss to Alvern on Tuesday night of this week, two nights ago. 47 to 35. It is February 18 as we record this in 2016. This is the next to the last game of the season for Nashua High South. They've got one more game on the schedule, and that's tomorrow in Manchester against Central. So a lot of basketball in 24 hours for both of these two teams as North's next action also tomorrow. They'll be hosting Concord to finish their season. Actually, uh, excuse me, they have two more games. They are hosting Concord tomorrow, and then they're at Londonderry on February 26th. That will be North's last game. The Titans of North win the tip-off, and it is a Deze Akore with the basketball. She does most of the ball handling, as we saw again in the Bishop Girton game. Sarah Cordova, who got her 1,000th career point with a three-pointer in that Bishop Girton game, may be scoring the first points in this contest as she missed the three-pointer but then got her own rebound and drove to the basket and was fouled in the process of shooting so she's to the line eight minute quarters in new hampshire high school boys and girls basketball we we're just underway first quarter and sarah cordova starts the scoring one nothing north is on top Cordova with perfect free throw shooting form hits them both and it's a 2-0 North lead to begin the game. We saw North play against Bishop Girton, of course, two nights ago on the 16th. Loose ball on the floor. We have a foul call, though, rather than a jump ball. And it's going to go against the Panthers, apparently. And the Titans will have a chance to uh, score 
both of the opening baskets of this game, up 2-0 already. Two nights ago, North lost to Bishop Girton 56 to 27. North has scored 29 points and 27 points in their last two contests. So it's been difficult for them to score. Adesia Corey had so many near misses in that BG game. And this time, again, a near miss. Uh, very good position on that baseline lay-in attempt, but it didn't fall. So still a 2-0 game in favor of North as the Panthers look for their first basket. An ill-advised pass there by Amber Hedquist as the teammate she was passing to had their back turned as the ball was bouncing in their direction. It was an easy steal for the Titans who have a chance to double up on the score now. Alana Choate lets a floater go up and it goes in and out. They're going to call an offensive foul. Alana Choate kind of aggressively through the seam in the defense, it appeared, but we had an offensive foul called against North, so that gives the ball right back to the Panthers. And still looking for their first points of the game. As Jocelyn Chaput, their top career scorer with over 1,000 career high school points, number five, will be doing a lot of the ball handling. Amber Hedquist with the turnaround that doesn't go, and Alana Choke comes out of the crowd with the rebound up ahead to Sarah Cordova. Bounce pass underneath, gets the return pass, and shoots long on the shot. And didn't touch the rim. Alana Choke swishes it through. A pretty set shot from the right side makes it four to nothing for the Titans. Now the Panthers jostling should put with it. J.C. And uh, also out there is Jasmine Sylvester at the guard position. As Kendall Bush. Oh, there's three guards out there, you could say. Kendall Bush, Jasmine Sylvester, and Jocelyn Chaput doing a lot of the ball handling. <laughs> now St. Louis telling me to shush. That's not going to happen. As we are in the stands together, Al St. Louis doing another fine rendition of the national anthem before the start of this game. Alana Cho gets the pass from Adesi Corey just barely. It's perimeter passing, wide open three for Sarah Cordova, and she does not miss. 7 0. The Titans have jumped out to a big early lead here as the Panthers struggle to get even a quality shot away. Jasmine Sylvester, pass intended for Shardella Spearman. Tight defense being played by the Titans. Jocelyn Chaput has it. Lana Cho carefully guarding her. Nice switcheroo by the Titans to play tight D. Alexis Ivory slid over to make life difficult for the Panthers. We have a foul called in the scrum in the far diagonal corner, and apparently that is going to go against the Panthers. So a difficult start for South, trailing 7-0. Had a decent look at the basket that time on the baseline drive, but could not get it to go. 4.46 to go. First quarter, still very early in this one, but it's been all north in the opening minutes. Cordova driving, almost a no-look pass. That was a no-teammate pass, but it ends up in the hands of Adesi Okore. Long shot is good. Alexis Ivory, A.I. Worthy of Allen Iverson, speaking of AIs, who could score. And it's a 9-0 Titans lead as the drive to the hoop does not bear fruit for the Panthers. Alana Choate dribbles out of the crowd and now will slow it down as she gives it to Adesi Okori, far sideline. Okori, nice change of direction, goes baseline, runs out of room though, and there to pick her up, Alexis Ivory gets the roll. Alexis Ivory with two straight buckets. It's a double-digit advantage for the Titans of Nashua North up 12 to nothing on the Panthers here. With uh, half of the first quarter in the books, the Panthers have still not scored. Jocelyn Chaput has got to start taking some shots, apparently. The best bet for the Panthers to score, trying to go one on five, and gets it to go. What a pretty shot. Kind of a finger roll scoop shot by Jocelyn Chaput. And that is the first bucket of the game 
for the Panthers. 12 to 2, still a commanding 10 point lead for North. But Corey goes in the corner. Choate's got it. Looking for a seam through the defense. A runner doesn't fall. Jasmine Sylvester rebound as they break the full court press. Chaput, who just scored that nice basket, she might be trying to continue that hot hand. The shot off the glass, no good. Rebound by Isabel Dunning, hands it off to Adeze Akore. And Adeze calling out directions to her offense as she gives it to Alana Cho in the corner to Cordova. Cordova being closely guarded by Chaput, runs out of room baseline, kicks it back outside to Isabel Dunning. She shoots over two players and makes it go. 14 to two. North enjoys a 12-point lead again, their biggest of the evening. As you get a look at the two head coaches, as our cameraman Tim O'Neill pans the court, head coach for South is uh, Ricky Olive, uh, excuse me, head coach for, there's a basket for the Panthers. So they make it a 12-4 game back to 14-4, uh, back to a 10-point game now. Sorry, head coach for South is Dan White Borney, and the head coach for North is Ricky Oliver. And they are all into this game. Hoping for the best in South, although they've lost seven in a row. Hoping the adrenaline of this contest may spark new life, but the talent of North, the parent on the court, Isabel Dunning, high off the glass and in. And now it is a 12-point advantage again for the Titans of North here on their home court, up 16 to four, with a minute and a half to go first quarter. A jumper from the right baseline doesn't go for Amber Hedquist, and saving it is Chaput from the over and back, gives it to Shardella Spearman. Spearman back to Chaput, goes off the pick. It's a three-point shot. If she wants to shoot it from there, she elects not to. Hedquist trying to go off a pick on the baseline, but ran out of room. Alana Choate was over there. Sarah Cordova. Kendall Bush was trying to set the pick, but this ran out of room. They're going to call a foul against the Titans. A blocking foul. Non-shooting. South losing seven in a row. Their most recent loss was to Alvern. Two nights ago, 47-35. What a pretty high arcing three-point shot by Jocelyn Chaput. She needs to just keep putting those shots up with that kind of success and the team hurting for points. She is the best go-to option right now is Jocelyn Chaput. 16-7, North on top. And a miscommunication on the pass cross-court. Obviously, it was uh, intended for Ariana Motovala, but Ariana had taken a step toward the basket just as the pass was on its way. Chaput avoiding the steal by Akori. Now Akori with the poke check and a beauty. She's got a chance to go one-on-one, -on -one and it is blocked out of bounds. They say no foul, but it is still Titans basketball. Desi Akori with some laser focused defense there. Able to poke that ball loose from Chaput on the dribble cleanly and go down court to set up a possible three point shot for Sarah Cordova. Misses to the left, an air ball. Well attended game and getting even more well attended by the second as more fans filing in here for the second half of the doubleheader as well. The boys game coming up next. We'll also have that one on National ETV. Jocelyn Chaput literally takes out two players, and now the third takeout. They're, the Titans were falling like bowling pins on that defensive set, and they finally drew a foul as Shardella Spearman actually ran over her defender, triggering the you can't do that chant from the Titans student body. At the buzzer, Adesi Corey gets it away, but misses the shot, and that is our score at the end of one quarter of play. It is Nashua North, the host team in tonight's Battle of the Bridge contest, leading it by nine points, 16 to seven over South.
North on a two game losing streak does have a winning record eight and six so you can see there very intent on not losing this game so they can stay well above 500 in fact if they do win this game it will guarantee them a winning record for the season with only two games remaining on the schedule after this one they'll play tomorrow here at North High School versus Concord and then they'll finish their season during the New Hampshire school vacation week on February 26. North will be playing at Londonderry in that game. So North very much a playoff team with playoff aspirations as they play against their intra-city rival here. South is uh, five places from the bottom and I'm not sure exactly how they set up the tournament but if they do take everybody but the bottom four teams they will be a playoff team we'll see how they set up the tournament brackets in March North's next game tomorrow uh, excuse me South's next game is tomorrow at home against Central Amber Hedquist being guarded very closely by Alexis Ivory gives it up to Kendall Bush. Kendall Bush to Shardella Spearman. Looking around, Shardella trying to find a seam in the defense. Nice spin move and gets fouled before the shot. A push in the back. That is a non-shooting foul, so South will inbound it underneath their own basket. In the second quarter, just underway in the second quarter. As North takes it out of their own zone. Adesia Corey has it. Baseline finds some room off the glass and in. And the best play of the night for Adesia Corey. Now that's why she's such a tough matchup for South to defend because she can penetrate, John. You see, if, if I'm Ricky Oliver, the one thing I'm not happy about in the first quarter was that my outside shooting wasn't that well except for one big three. You know? And you get off to a 12 0 lead. I've seen the Titans in the past get off the big leads and let the other teams come back in. And that's what they have to prevent in this game. They've done a good job defending the baseline. So, Jocelyn Chaput was intercepted on the way to the basket and gave up a jump ball. She, you could see her glancing out of the corner of her eye to see if she might want to dish the ball as she approached the basket. And at that moment, the defender seized on the basketball and forced the jump. So, Adesia Corey, possession arrow favored the Titans. They are up by 11 points and looking for more as Ariana Motivala hands it back for the three point shot for Alexis Ivory. And I believe that's Ivory's second basket of the first half. A lot of different players contributing to the scoring for the Titans. And it's been all Jocelyn Chaput. Wow, that's the South. problem. That's why there's such a good matchup. Because they have more depth and they steal the ball right there. Adesi Corey got in the passing lane. Sarah Cordova fed her the ball and Adesi knew just what to do with it. 23 to 7. Titans lead at this one in the first half. Six and a half minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Nice pick and go and Jocelyn put left the, uh, the floater short. Adesi Corey bringing it down court. Changes direction, finds a seam, kicks it outside. Cordova being marked by Chaput. Off a pick, takes the three and misses to the right. Rebound. Look at that pressure. Full court in the corner, tough to get out of there, but they do. Kendall Bush has it. Changes direction. Ariana Motivala trying to stop her, but Bush does a nice dri dri dribbling display and gives it off to Chaput. Walking it near sideline. Amber Hedquist had it taken away from her, but a little bit too aggressive with the hand check on the on the wrist. Uh, Deze gets called for the foul. Mon shooting. That's five fouls on each team now. Both teams being aggressive. You'd expect that in a rivalry game. Well attended but with these cheer teams for both schools. I think in the month of December, South would have expected more than what they've gotten right now. 
Yeah, it was a it was a rough season. Uh, it's uh, at least well, the last five, month anyway. They're, they're, they're five and eleven. Yeah. They're probably the problem is John. They don't at have one a game. point they were five and four. Four five, exactly, <clears throat> and they've lost seven in a row. And the the danger is that teams can catch them when they're not playing in that first round. Uh, you know, in that final week of the season. Right. So that's the danger that they face. Headquest will inbound it to Jocelyn Chaput. Teze Okori is her shadow. He gets in the way again. And we have foul against Teze. And Ricky Oliver clearly doesn't like that. From the photo I just took, neither does Teze. <laughs> no. Uh, that might be in the, uh, the newspaper tomorrow. Shocked at that call. And she's it's not coming out. Either Desi will play every minute. Oh, Exhaustion is never a factor. Uh, I think that Girton game it. had but to have But foul trouble is a different story. Yeah, I think that Girton game had to have exhausted her. Yeah, and they got to play tomorrow night, both of these teams. Yes, they do. Newly into the game for South is Jessica Zalzal, number 23. Up top, she put with a wide open three, missed to the right, and she hears the air ball serenade. Yeah, you know that's North their Coast. offense. Is she put? Yeah. You know, it, uh, against Alvern, I saw them a little bit the other night against Alvern, John, and it, it just seems as Okori comes out right now, it just seemed that they were trying to get Charday Spearman involved in the offense a little bit more along the baseline. Spearman with a nice steal. Wrestles it away from everybody and gives it to Chaput. Back to Spearman. Zalzal gets triple teamed and the ball is taken away by Ariana Motivala. Nice steal by the Titans. Just when it looked like South might turn good defense into some offense. In the corner, foul. Alexis Ivory had it. And hits the floor and a lot of hitting the floor. Yeah, in this game. we talked about the rivalry and the intensity born of that. Out of bounds to inbound it will be Sarah Cordova, guarded by Jocelyn Chaput. Four and a half minutes left to go first half as the Titans throw it away. And it'll be Panther ball with a couple of fouls on Adesi at least. I'm, I don't think she has three or two or three. North's up by 23 to 7, so it makes sense that Ricky Oliver could afford to take her out at the game here. He hasn't been a basket for a long time. Though. No. But either two. Yeah, true. South is yet to score in this period. And we're already halfway through. South did score 35 points on Tuesday against Alvin. Right now they're on pace to score maybe 20. They gotta get it going. Holding the ball is Zalza, actually number 22, rather, for South is Abigail Murray. And Spearman got called for the travel. Shardell apparently had a, a Shardea, excuse me. I think I made that mistake in another game. Shardea Spearman just lost contact with the court with her pivot foot, and the official was right there. Three fifty to go, Art and Ariana Motivala did a nice change of direction dribble, had the ball stripped away. Panthers thought it was a clean steal, but the foul will go for the reach. Now see all that penetration and that speed and the good, good uh, you know dribbling. The other night against Girton, the ball was just knocked right back. They, they, they had nowhere to go. The body was running the bodies. It's a whole different, whole different, whole different matchup for National North in this game. That was the seventh foul against the visitors from South, and that'll put North at the line for a one and one. This will be a live ball unless it goes through, and it does as Ariana hits the first of two free throws now. Makes it a 25-7 lead. They have not yet put the, uh, the point up on the board for the Titans. For some reason. Hits and goes. Should be 26 to 7 right now. Not well, 25. Was it 23 7? Wasn't it 24? It's 23. Oh, okay. 23. My mistake. 
So it is correct 25 to 7 after the two free throw makes by Mutavala. It is a big deficit facing South right now with possession down 18. Amber Hedges at the top of the key. Zal Zal with it. Jessica holding it. Oh, Bounce great pass. defense. Kendall Bush does a good job of wrestling that ball away. Too careful on the attempted pass, though, to Abigail Murray and was stolen. See, look at that crowd. interior defense. Yeah. That's something that they weren't able to get position with the other night. Against Bishop Clinton. Wide open three, and just short on the shot was North's Heather Roscoe, number 14. To put straight down the middle of the court, eyes up, stops, pops. And, and no, missed. just off the back. Right on line, but just a little too well, much Well, you can on. see why she's a 1,000-point scorer. She's got a good shooting touch. But today, with that defense, it's awfully tough. You know, when you're the only person, really, that the other team is going to try to stop, that makes it awfully hard. You know, you can I, see that I, I, I shot a photo of her the other night against Alvern, where she's trying to dribble the ball in between four people. <laughs> you know, it's impossible. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I, I was going to say, in any sport where you know who the go-to person is, who, who, if you stop them, you stop the entire team, mm -hmm. that's difficult to overcome for the team that has just that one player. And when you have multiple players who are, are very good, that's, that wins championships, and Bishop Burton appears to have that kind of team this year. The girls. Well, they do, John, but I, the one thing that I would be cautious about with Gurton, and I've seen this happen to other teams, and they look very, very good, but they have one weakness, and teams in a tournament have that practice time to try to exploit that weakness and get prepared for it. King's about to reveal the kryptonite of Bishop Gurton's Outside shooting, team. don't you think? Yeah. You saw that game. You know, I think they need better out. If they need, if they had great outside shooting, they would be a do a dominant, a lock. Yep. Yeah, good point. You know, but you know, they don't really need it right now. Well, that's in the, the tournament. Too, they right? might. You know, High that's the thing. Shots underneath, they feel like, why do we need to shoot outside? A good zone defense might force them to do that, I though. See, yeah. So that's the one thing that, that would, you know, I would caution about Girton, as good as they have looked. Good teams will exploit your weakness. Jocelyn should put with an heroic drive to the basket through a number of white uniforms and draws the foul, goes to the line. This will be the first point or points in a long time for the Panthers if Jocelyn can make a free throw here. I don't think they have, that was their first point of the second quarter, right? It there. is, 151 Ooh. left in the half. That hurts, if you're a Panther player or fan, that's one point in eight minutes of play, or seven minutes of play, not good. Jocelyn Chaput trying to make it two for two, does, oh, missed to the left. North keeps the rebound in the corner, Jasmine uh, Alexis Ivory does a good job. Cordova driving, no good. Follow up. Dunning can't get it to fall. Cordova with another chance gets it up top. In the corner, the open shooter. Heather Roscoe, great job of ball movement and finding the open teammate by the Titans. 27 to 8. North on top, south yeah, with the ball. North needs this game. You know, they're eight and six. They need to get you know, a little bit of uh, distance and try to maybe get a home court for that first round game. Finish in the top eight. Sarah Cordova for three, you just know, off to the right. The chances of doing that are good if you can get double digits and win. Danielle Upton, who set up this offensive series with a steal, missed that shot. Uh, you're gonna inside of a minute to play in the first half, so. Four bites of the apple here yeah. for the Titans. No points. But they don't have their main unit on the floor right now. Cordova is probably the leader of this group right now. Ricky Oliver, Oliver is just shouting instructions to his team right now. They seem to be responding. 
as South cannot figure out how to get a quality shot away. It's stolen by Sarah Cordova. Uh, there's got to be at least 12 turnovers by the South in this first half. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. The play would seem to be get the last shot here. Up oh, look at that eight. lane. That's, that's the kind of play we saw Gurton make the other night. You know, that kind of play. Isabel Dunning with the drive in the Chris lane. Chris's got to throw this up as the buzzer's going to sound, and she nails it. Beautiful three-pointer is good before the buzzer. She let it go. Jocelyn Chaput adding to her career point total, 29 to 11. And just when the South fans had something to cheer about, the students of North shout scoreboard, and the scoreboard says North ahead 29 to 11 as we go to halftime. I'm John Collins with Tom King. Our cameraman is Tim O'Neill. We'll come back with the second half and the conclusion of this one right after this break. spent eight minutes decorating their little brother. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Welcome back everybody to Nashua High School North. John Collins with Tom King here on Nashua ETV. It's the second half about to begin. North hosting South in girls basketball, and it's been all Titans for most of the game. 29 to 11, the host and home team North leads this one over South. Well, just uh, it's an issue of, of depth and talent right now. So, you know, that's that's basically what we've seen in the first half. We've seen North push the ball up. We've seen them be aggressive and go right at the basket. But the one thing that I Cordova. thought. Oh, there it is. You see, talent, you know. Yeah. You know one South, shot at the other end. South's got an open shot. They Amber miss. Headquist miss. Sarah North. Cordova yep. make. And we've got a 32-11 yep. game. And that is just uh, right That's there gonna, in a nutshell what's been going on. Yeah, and the, here's the thing, John. One thing that I was really impressed about with North in the first half. I don't want to make this all about North because South's got some good players. They just don't have enough of them. Is... North's defense was stifling in that first quarter. It really was. I mean, they just South did not get any open shots. And Ricky Oliver's emphasizing the defense. You can tell he's just barking out orders right now from all the way down court. Well, you know what's it, interesting about this is I, I've come here for a couple of North girls games uh, this season to, to, to shoot photos. Ricky's been at the opposite bench. They moved the bench down to be closer. Uh, I, I'm, you know, maybe near the defensive end. Maybe that's what he wanted to be. I'm not sure. Chardella Spearman with the turnaround hook that doesn't go. Rebound by North and Isabel Dunning bringing him down for it. Both coaches on their home floor are to the to the a left. A choke uh, for uh, three. Uh -huh. You know, both coaches have set up on their home floor to the left of the opposite stands. You know, and you look across and yep. to the left. Um, and to the left on your TV screen. And Dan Wagorn is going to call timeout now. They're 35 and that's where 11. Tim yeah. is pointing the lens right, right now. And that's where yep. both coaches are for their home court. So how it worked out today, I don't know. I see. And not too much to cheer about. As you can see, the South student body back down behind the bench over there. The boys teams for the next game, they're already here. They're part of the attendance for this game. Yeah, a lot of them were out in the lobby. At oh, lot of, yeah. Nate Maswell was out there. Yeah. <laughs> I said at the uh, conclusion of the BG North boys basketball game, another opportunity to ro watch Ronnie Silva work his magic for at the point guard for North. He's Really having a terrific season, Tom. And, and he's a big He reason. is, yeah. and he played well for North in the Girton game. Yeah. And, you know, again, Steve Lane has always sung his praises as Silva goes, so goes that team, I think. Yeah, they're 10 uh, and really, 3, and he's a big reason he's why. A, yeah, he is. He, he has come into his own this year. You saw it towards the end of last year. You know, and, you know basically, Steve Lane 
you know, gave him the keys to the to the to the Corvette, let him drive it, you know. And, and what happened is they made it all the way to the semifinals. Jocelyn should put bounce pass Bush, bounce pass Headquist, splits the defense, but can't get enough elevation to get that up on over the rim. A Corey across midcourt with her head up, looking to the right, goes to the left. Spin move. move. Off the glass if that had gone. That would have been something. She draws the foul. Grinning. <laughs> can't tell because of the mouthpiece, but you can tell her, you know, the way she looked at her teammates, she was grinning. <laughs> that kind of move, can she get away with that in a college level? Depends on what level she goes to, what school she goes to, what team she goes to. Say, she puts herself in position to score baskets many times. I think it's the finish that she needs to work on. She makes people miss, she makes people head spin, and then she gets in close, and there's so many near misses where the ball hits the rim, doesn't quite follow. At least in the BG game, that's what happens. So maybe she can work on that, and, and it will work at the college level. But maybe work that square on the glass a little bit more, and find your hot spot. Open three by Amber Hedquist, misses to the left, and right there for the rebounds, Alana Cho. Stop and go dribble. Serpentine route. Can't get it to go. Gets her own rebound back yeah, and kicks it up top. on a show right now. Okore splits the defense, runs into a double team. Choke and Okore both see ample room to penetrate. And before the shot, uh, hands on the arm. kind of frustration with the National South kids. Yeah. Well, as we said, they scored 35 points two nights ago in a pretty close game against Alvern, lost 47-35. Yeah, they were just, Alvern had too much depth for them. That crossover dribble by Okori. This is the shot, but still, yeah. it's the open shot. It's a nice matchup with Okori against Chaput. Yeah, they've been dueling. And another timeout for Dan Wyborny. He's going, talking about to the officials about something. Yeah, he's hot about he's something. He's hot about something. I don't know what. As we get a look at Dan White Borney. Cameraman for this broadcast, Tim O'Neill. I'm John Collins with Tom King, our executive producer, Pete Johnson. You can watch any of our games anywhere, anytime online at nashua.easystream.com. It's February 18 as we record this. John Travolta's birthday, Tom. Guess how old uh, Saturday, Mr. Saturday Night Fever is. Hold on now. He is in no, no, the no, O'Shea on. movie. Me, yeah, he is. He plays a great Kardashian, Robert Kardashian. Isn't he? he does. He's doing a great job. He does. Uh, I, I saw the first one. I've got a, I, I've DVR the other two. Yeah. Uh, let me think now. Yeah, throw a guess out there. John Travolta's age. That great Grease remake on live on TV. It got huge ratings. I'd Gardella. say he's 58 years old. He's 62. Wow, he he's looks close, good huh? for his age, though. You're right. I mean, I could see why you guessed 58. Yeah. Yeah. He's been great as a villain in a, in a couple of movies. Face uh, Off is one. Uh, the 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 train movie. Um, the taking of Pelham 123. Yeah, yeah, he's he, great. I haven't seen that He's one. also in another movie with Halle Berry that he was pretty good as a villain. Oh, yeah. Adesi Akore playing the part of the villain against South right now. Alana Choke for an open three. AC for three, and it's wow. a 40 to 11. Watch lead. that play because it's a play they'll probably run a lot next year because oh, Choke's going to be. You know, their anchor. Because they lose a little bit of their heart and soul here. Because, you know, going will be uh, Cordoba. Ivory goes, who graduates. Roscoe, but also Adesi Okori goes. Okori and Cordoba both go. And that's going to set, that's going to bring a whole different look to this team because they haven't been without either, either one since for their freshman year. They both all play as freshmen. <laughs> Alana Cho checks out of the game along with Alexis Ivory. You know, don't forget last year they had 
Michaela Chuck. Oh, yeah. Who had some height. But Michaela uh, has opted to put her attention into volleyball full time. So she's playing club volleyball and not playing basketball, according to what Ricky Oliver told us I a see. while ago. Yeah. So that's, you know. She's a good volleyball player. Yep. She was a bad basketball player. Either. No, I she wasn't that, bad at all. She made this team probably a 12 or 13 win team. Baseline, Sarah Cordova got rid of it just before she hit the deck. And Corey bounced past Dunning, immediately triple teamed, and we have a foul instead of a jump ball. I think it's going to go against Chardea, uh, actually, yeah, Chardea screaming that call. For the reach in, 423 remaining third quarter. Still a lot of basketball left to be played, but North showing no signs of letting up. As soon as I say that, they turn it over. Panthers ball, Chardea Spearman trying to shoulder her way out of a crowd, but a Desi Corey making life difficult, forces a turnover or a loose ball and a foul. Who's that against? Could that be a third against the Desi? Or? I don't know, but this third quarter is a crawl right now. Yeah, a lot of There's whistles. no flow and a lot of whistles. Amber Hedquist will inbound it. Danielle Upton guarding her. And now it's a quarry against Chaput. Back to the duel at half court. Jessica Zalzal. Chaput. Chaput from downtown. They need more of that for the Panthers. Makes it a 14, 40 to 16 game. Still a big 24 point lead for the Titans. Stopping a pop for a quarry. That's the one thing she needs to work on is shooting. Got that NBA point guard mentality, the point guard that can dribble and distribute, but not the best What shooter. a shot wow. by Chaput. How'd How that did go she in? get that in there? That had to be a perfect bounce off the glass around the yes, Look at that court vision Up to for Okori with the pass. <laughs> and we have out of bounds off of the Panthers. That's Great feed from Akore to Danielle Upton underneath the basket. Just couldn't finish it off, but the Titans still have the ball. Cordova with the catch and shoot. Just missed. Front rimmed it. And the Panthers having all kinds of trouble coming out. Oh, there's of been end. all sorts of mayhem in that corner for the last half hour. You know, we're out yeah. 45 minutes since this game began. And North's defense has been stifling. They haven't left them get anywhere easily. Jessica Zalzo runs out of room, beats the double team with a pass to Amber Hedquist, and Amber's shot is short, out of bounds. Forty to eighteen, the Titans lead at two fifty-seven left to play here in the third period. Corey calling a play. Go to Roscoe to Corey. Almost lost the handle. Spinning around. Creates the shot and gets fouled. Fantastic move. After the BG game, I think she's got two brothers to play basketball. Oh, there's, I, I do the kids' sports for Telegraph. I edit that, and I get the releases from the Biddy Basketball and, uh, and CYO. Uh -huh. And uh, there's a quarry all through there. There's two families. Two families. Two course. families in Nashville that dominate Choke. the basketball. Choke and a quarry. <laughs> <laughs> you will see lots of them all through. Yeah. I have a feeling. Look all through, the all guy. levels. The little guy's got the... Uh, Competitive fire in his eyes. Every time I see him, he's bouncing that basket. Ten-year-old? Yeah. 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 Should yeah, push. There's a lot. Off the glass and in. Jocelyn oh, asserting she's, herself she's here. She's really trying to do it one-handed. I mean, it was 40-11 yeah. to 11 at one point. Now it's 40-20. to 20. It's a 9-0 run for South. They have a foul. They're calling this game tight. The BG game, they let him play a lot. No, they're not letting him play in this game. Yep. Desi Okori is telling her teammates, keep moving around. Let the clock be our ally. 2.18 to play. 20-point lead. 
We're going to need new whistles after this one. The other one's going to be all up, used up. Well, let's see if they let him play in the third. Wow, what, what a shot. Wow. Cordova, I believe, right? Was or that was number it? 11? That was 11. That's Peyton Ryan, that was the, who's a the freshman, freshman guard. Yeah, it was the freshman Ryan, letting, yeah. letting you know who's going to be taking some shots after Sarah Cordova graduates from North. It's going to be Peyton Ryan. <laughs> Missing the shot was Hedquist and jump ball as the loose scramble on the court draws four players. 1.49 to go third quarter. 43-20, the Titans lead it with the, the lead and the ball. Corey sat out some minutes in the second quarter with foul trouble, hasn't committed any fouls since. The catch and shoot by Peyton Ryan. Good looking shot. Doesn't go. Chaput with the long rebound. 90 seconds left to go third quarter. Chaput changes direction. Back out top. Jessica Zalzal and the double team got fouled. Oh, travel. Dan White Borney rubbing his eyes and cheeks after that call. Minute 20 left in the quarter. Corre to her right. Catch and shoot Peyton Ryan. Wow, she's a good shooter. Look at that shot. We had the angle there on Nashua TV. That makes it a 46-20 advantage for the Titans. Chaput changes directions, and what's this? Foul away from the ball against the Corre. Well, she doesn't like it. With a minute left to go in the third quarter, away from the ball, a push in the back. And they are indeed going to give Adeze another rest. Into the game comes Ariana Motovala. Could be her fourth. Is that her that fourth? Could be her fourth. Could be. Yeah. She hasn't fouled out, but she's in deep foul trouble. She doesn't want to foul out in this yeah. game. She's the biggest reason why North has a 26 point lead. So, as much as Adeze likes to play, the damage has been done here in this contest. Jocelyn should put going from right to left. Amber Hedquist, the stop, the pop, too long, and gets her own rebound, gets it away, fouled. A lot of these fouls were not called. Right? As we can read Tom's tone of voice, and I wish they weren't called in the second half. Either. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and more and more fans filing in here, folks. Nashua TV. Recording it as Amber hits the first of two. We're recording a double header here at North High School tonight. The next game will be boys from North and South going. And at the it. pace will be a little bit quicker. You know, the been adjustment is 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 frantic. You saw that the other night. Yeah. You know, the adjustment is frantic from girls to guys. You would have been in heaven in the boys game two nights ago during the free throws. It was so noisy. Good. Every Finally. You know? Finally. Oh, man. Yeah, like it should be. Psyching out the opposition when they're at the free throw line. You know? It's about time. <laughs> <clears throat> you can tell the really good foul shooters, too, because they were able to block it out and still make them. But you might, you might get to witness what we're talking about here in the girls' game. It's almost like you're at Wimbledon, and or like you said before, uh, the 18th hole at the Masters. At Augusta. <laughs> yeah, everybody gets quiet. Well, it was very, shots. very quiet in the gym for that girls' game. Very quiet. It was, yeah. Now, they have, uh, they, they noticed that, all right? And I bet at the urging of Brad Creek, some things have changed because they have a doubleheader with Bedford next week on uh, the 26th. Yeah, Sylvester, as we speak, Gets right? her own rebound, yep. So, it was supposed to be girls set first, again, at 5 o'clock, 5.15, guys to follow. And they changed it because Girton's got a better team in terms of their, their, pro, their place in the standing, and Bedford is a good team. So it's going to be a, a, a battle of two contenders. Yeah. And uh, they wanted that with more exposure, so they're going to leave that to the later game. I see. We'll see if the crowd reacts the same way. Okay. 
shooting free throws for South is Abigail Murray. She hits it. 46-24. 22-point lead for the Titans. With possession here with 12 seconds left to go in the third quarter, and it was out of bounds. Kendall Bush thought it went out of bounds off of Danielle Upton. We have no benefit of replay, however, so the Titans retain possession. 10.7 seconds left. They should just set up here for a one shot. Hold the ball up by 22. And it might come down to Ariana Motovala to take it. Oh, oh great pass. Oh, no, what a play by Shaput. Block. Shaput comes out of nowhere. Great hustle play. Are you kidding me? A timeout with 2.7 seconds left to go in the third quarter. In the third quarter. It's not just that there's 2.7 seconds left. It's, it's a 22 point game. Come on. That's what it is. It's a 22 what point could, game. What could Ricky Oliver. He's, he's coaching like it's a playoff game. He's warming them up. But what could he not tell them? Three seconds later. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, opportunity <laughs> to say, here's what we're going to do in the playoffs if we have the similar situation. Three seconds left to go. We need a basket. That's, That's what practice is for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, in other words, in other words, do it on their time, not mine. <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's what we're getting That's at. That's what we're getting at yeah, right here. All right. You know? Here's the catch on. and shoot. Looked like uh, Amber Hedquist got a little piece of that. Is, Is that, that worth a timeout? Well, if you go, remember that time where we did that three second and, and you got, it got a deflected pass? You got to get more separation, you got to get rid of it quicker. Practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're after three here, 46 24 in favor of Nashville North. Over to Ashley South. Four games left in the season for the boys, but. For, uh, well, for South Tom, their next game is their final game of the season. That's just it. Tomorrow night. Right. You see, that's their final game of the yeah. regular season. For and North, they've got two games left after right, this. Right, the final week. Yeah. But South's got to worry a little bit. Because if you only have five wins, okay? There's the standings. Right. But if you only have five wins, you gotta, you you have to fear that those other teams creep up by you. Namely, Exeter and Keene, who you are know, 4 and 11. I mean, they can get win. They can. They can win games, and you're not playing. Keen's got 16 games under their belt already, so they've only got one left to play, maybe. No, they got two. It's 18 game South? schedule. 18 game oh, it's schedule. An 18 game schedule. Maybe there's a makeup that's not on the NHIA. Not site. for South. No. 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 Five and 11. John going into this game. Oh, 16, 16. 17, 18. Right. So this is okay. the 17th game. So no. Okay. That's right. Five and 11. We're watching game 17. Kendall Bush beats a double team by going off a pick. Headquist shot, cannot climb up over the metal frame, and we have a jump ball. It'll go down uh, the Titan way. And it is Titan ball. Just underway, fourth quarter here at Nashua High North. Big crowd on hand, watching the end of this one, and they'll be around for the start of the next one. Boys contest and Corey with burst of speed and gets fouled on the way to the basket. I don't know if they're going to put her at the line. That's the oh yeah, that's active shooting. So okay. 7:25 left to play in the game. If I'm Ricky, I have Corey out for another three and a half, and then I take her out with three, four, three or four minutes left to go. Right Rattles in and out. I don't want my, my top player hurt in a rivalry game with more important games left, you know, more important stage for standings left to play and as well as the tournament. Yeah. Dawson should put in Shardaya Spearman playing catch near midcourt. Shardaya with the quarterback pass to Jasmine Sylvester and the foul called against. Might be a court. It is for a push. Is that it? I guess you don't have to wait for Coach Oliver to pull her out. She may have just fouled out. That's five. That's all you get, right? Yeah, but I they think if it was, I think if it was uh, five, they would huddle up for a timeout. 
Yeah, the, the scorer table said five fouls against the Desert. Really? So, so that's it. So Corey done for the night. But she can say, my work is done here. Up by 23 points with 7.13 to go. So you would think uh, Jocelyn Chaput so sure got glad to see her sit down. And she had been well, Jocelyn's that, shadow you know, for most of the game. That's just it. You'll see Dan White Borney have them you know, basically try to isolate Chaput a lot. And it looks like number 13 is going to take a Deze spot on the court. Jocelyn should put the steal with the steal. And a block by Cordova. And should put's going to be on Isabel Dunning. Now you choke. get some choke time, perhaps. Newly into the game for North is number 13, Janessa Lofton. The freshman not spared the air ball chant by the South crowd. Jocelyn Chaput from an NBA three. Misses Long. Long rebound. And I think it was Jocelyn following her shot that committed the foul. Late whistle on that play. She had gotten the pass off well before that whistle had been blown. To the line for North in the penalty, Alexis Ivory. It's a one and one. It's a live ball. A nice rebound by Amber Headquist. So the foul actually pays off. Because South gets possession down. Spearman somehow keeps the dribble alive, but stolen away by Janessa Lofton, the freshman, to choke off the glass. No good. Rebound, Spearman. Good outlet pass. Nice pass by Spinner. You're right. One on one. Chaput stops, pops. Good defense by North. Not committing the foul. Making yep. it stationary. Three pointer. Grazes the glass. No good. And Chaput with another frustration foul. Reaching in. Reaching in, but that's a foul. That Tiki tack. Oh, call. No question about it. Yeah. Right. No, no question about it. Let him play the game. It's. Uh, it's come to the attention of Tom King's radar, finely tuned after 30 years of covering sports, that these officials are calling this game way too close. And it's good. So the one and one, she earns a second shot, does Alexis Ivory. 6.03 to go on the, on the game clock, but that could be 15 minutes in real time. The way this one's being called. Jasmine Sylvester across midcourt. Janessa Lofton on her. Shardaya Spearman inside. The head push. Good pass. Can't get the finish though. And Jasmine Sylvester steals it twice. Chaput thought about it. Drives and in. Jocelyn with a nice layup drill there. 49-28. 21-point lead for the Titans. Sarah Cordova goes behind the back, spins around. Still not able to shake the foot, so she passes it. Alexis Ivory for three. And that's what you need to loosen up South's defense. South has been playing some tough D in this quarter. And that loosens it up. Look at Chaput with a long rocket launcher. Right on line. Chaput nearly stole it. That's the one thing you got to like about Chaput. She else is back on defense no matter what. She competes. Yeah, she sure does. Wire to wire. <coughs> Heather Roscoe against Jasmine Sylvester. She got a finger on it, but <laughs> Elizabeth Bull actually oh, is man. number 14. Uh, you put two hands no, up. Number four, Jasmine Sylvester. You yeah. put two hands up and you get within an inch, you're going to draw a whistle with these That's guys. That's what's going on. It is yeah. exactly what's going on. It's just, yeah, there's no reason for it. Roscoe. She stepped over the line when she took the free throw, so they yep. called so a violation. Call a violation, then it'll go over to you. Yeah. I did notice that her, her unique style of free throw shooting. She's got to lose that little quirk when she shuffles forward both feet when she releases. 
extra put. Thought about another NBA three. Instead, Spearman's going to try to back in. Open for Kendall Bush. We saw that in Biddy basketball. Kendall yes, Bush we did, didn't we? For two. Right. 22 point lead though for the Titans still as South does get to the 30 point plateau with four and a half minutes to go. They've definitely picked up the scoring. Now Jocelyn's got to be in foul trouble big time. That's another foul against number five. That's got to be at least four against Jocelyn, I would think. Gone for some reason are the days where the scoreboard would tell you that. Who had the foul? Yeah. Well, yeah, who had the foul and, and how many? But she's still staying in the game. Yeah. I did see Dan Whiteborny talk to her after that foul. Maybe told her that she had to be cautious now. Yep. Four and a half to play, 53, 54, 30 in favor of. To be fair to Jocelyn, more of her teammates should be trying to reach in and do some steals too, but I know they're calling it really tight. So. That's just it. I mean, yeah, how many times yeah. you put North at the line, you know? Jocelyn thinking about a three, drives baseline. Scoop shot doesn't go. That would have been a nice highlight. I mean, both basket. teams are in the penalty with 10 fouls. Dunning splits the defense, and uh oh. Not against Chaput, I believe. That no. Was, yeah. It was away from that play. Could have been, could have been Spearman or Dunning. Jardea's going to sit down. She may have fouled out. Four oh eight to go. Isabel Dunning patiently awaiting her free throws. And Chardea Spearman checks out of the game and South's number 22, Abigail Murray, comes into the game. Along with Amber Hedquist, Kendall Bush, Jocelyn Chaput, and Jasmine Sylvester for South. Isabel hits the first of two free throws. She's out there with Sarah Cordova, Daniel Upton, Heather Roscoe, and the freshman, Janessa Lofton, number 13, who's shown some flashes of young brilliance. One of the players of the future for Ricky Oliver. He came into the game after Desiree Corey fouled out. It's good for that bench to get, you know, these kids to get this kind of time because yeah. in, a, in a game with a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people watching and everything else, because next year it's their team. Right. You know, so this is a, a good opportunity for them, and I'm sure Ricky knew that going into this game. Jocelyn Chaput splits the defense and lays it in. Great court vision by the point guard herself. She is it. 56-32 though, the Titans still comfortably ahead. 342 to play in this basketball. Sarah Cordova takes two people with her and just flinging it up. That was one of the instances where they did not call it close. Number one for North is Jaden Smith, also a freshman. But that's good. Jaden yeah. Smith got the ball and she made a play. Yeah, she did. And she you actually know? drew a foul. They just didn't call it for once. <laughs> but no. one time I thought they should have called a foul. Yeah, no kidding. Jocelyn Chaput, Kendall Bush. Ariana Motivala guarding her closely. Murray bounce pass. Sylvester changes direction. Bush. Sylvester open. got away with a double dribble. Headquist try to shoot in rhythm, but they're all over her. Sylvester up top, Upton, uh, Chaput rather. Going against Jaden Smith. Nice change of direction. Oh. Twice. Oh, did she travel? Double dribble. Double dribble. Well, what happened was she wanted to shoot the outside shot. Then, so she stopped. But then she saw the opening. Yeah. It's like the Red Sea parted. And then she put the ball on the floor again, and there's the double dribble play. Ariana Motivala. Stolen away by Chaput. She finds Bush, but she finds herself in the media double team. My son's doing, uh, in English, he's got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde right now, writing essays about it. Right. You have the good and the bad. It's not, in basketball, it's not good and evil, but it's should I or shouldn't I. A lot of times a point guard will go down court and it's like, you have options. And you have options and the danger is is the point guard want to take over the game to the point where she shuts out the rest of her teammates. That's true too. But what happens sometimes with point guards is Kendall Bush hits that shot. 
your indecision causes a turnover. You'll you'll right. say should I shouldn't I, and you end up traveling or double dribbling. Again, that's what practice is for. You come down true. the floor, you know where everybody's going to be. You know what you have to do. Right. Motivala spinning around, double team taken away. She put with it and misses the easy lay-in. Kendall Bush tries to follow. Ariana Motivala springing ahead of the field, spins around, gets fouled. Yeah, they notice, seem reluctant to call that one. Yeah, notice there's no pulling the ball back out and kind of taking the clock down for the Titans that are playing all the way through. Yeah. I'd rather see them come back and pull it out, get this group used to doing that a little bit. Like Abigail Murray got called for the foul, number 22, as they watch Ariana make the first of two free throws. Also a freshman for the Titans getting action here. Ariana's second shot misses. Head twist rebound. Jocelyn should put with Jaden Smith on her. Senior versus freshman here. Jocelyn making Jaden work on defense. Gets by her, puts it up, no good. Rebound, Jasmine Sylvester. Headquist with three. Left it short, followed her own shot though. And can't get that to go. She might get two rebounds and tries. And <laughs> what are you shaking your head about? Uh, two minutes even to go. That's the two minute warning. That, that, that whistle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a case where you just let it play. They're going for the ball right there. Yeah. With a 24 point difference, on, point the difference scoreboard. on the scoreboard. <laughs> Checking into the game for North, number 25 is Catherine Lynn, also a freshman. It'll be noisy in here after this. The music will be blaring, and, the, yeah. and both teams, boys' basketball teams, will come out on the floor. There won't be any half hour in between, like there was a good the other night. They'll come right out, I'm sure. Catherine Lynn showed some signs of uh, ability and competitive fire. Six yeah. feet one, Tom, a freshman, is one of the players that Ricky Oliver will count on to develop as a basketball I just player. Can't, I just shake my head at these foul balls. I mean, come on, let them play. Yeah, I was the trying game. to get your mind off the no, foul No, it's ball. not getting off. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> you're never going to get my mind off of that. 159 yeah. to play, and the whistle's blow when he touched. You, you know, know, it helps attendance, though. Is this game, uh, the boys' game, yeah, about to start a half hour late. In, everybody filters in, I know. Yeah. Yeah, my, my uh, newborn granddaughter is going to be ready to go to Disney World by the time I leave this gym tonight with all these foul calls. Well, she'll be five, I think, by that point. <laughs> she'll be five, and John Travolta will be 67. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great reference to earlier in the broadcast. I mentioned it was John Travolta's birthday, and he's 62 today, February 18th, 2016. Right now it's a.m. in the p.m. Ariana Motovala misses her second shot and under two minutes to go. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. we're seeing a lot of faces out here we normally don't see. Scoop shot by Sylvester doesn't go. Chaput has, hit, has taken the, the bench. Beautiful shot so. from downtown. Number 15 for South. I believe that's Elizabeth Bull. We have 14 on our program. No, it's 15. I don't think we have that number. So. It's probably not. Probably a player up from JV's job. Yeah. Because they only had about eight or nine varsity kids a couple of weeks ago Oh, you know on what? their roster. I brought the JV roster. When we did the Girton game, South only had about eight players. I want this for preparation. Girls. Is that good? That's, oh, it's that's not north. South. It's North. That's yeah. North. Long shot from the corner. Doesn't go. Ariana Motivala. South Jessica Zalzal handling the point guard duties at the moment. Jasmine Sylvester with it. Fifty-five seconds left to go in the game. 
58 to 37. North leads south. Well attended game here as this one ends and the next one Ricky Oliver wants a timeout. You're watching Nashua ETV. I'm John Collins with Tom King. Our cameraman Tim O'Neill who needs to apply for overtime after all the foul calls and whistles that have occurred here in the second half of this game. Ricky Oliver clearly trying to prep his team for the playoffs, playing this game, coaching this game like it's uh, an even Steven matchup at, on the scoreboard to prepare his team not only for the playoffs but for tomorrow night's game when they will be playing host to Concord and finishing the season at Londonderry next Wednesday during school vacation week. Ariana Motivala, 45 seconds to go. Long shot from the corner by Heather Roscoe. Misses. Jasmine Sylvester will inbound it. Bring it up court. Danielle showing off the dribbling skills. Deflected pass, tight defense being played wire to wire in this one by North has caused many turnovers. Catherine Lynn saves it almost. Nice try. 15 seconds to go. And the hey hey goodbye chant by the North students who may have their reason to cheer in the second game as well. The boys of North have a terrific season going. They're 10 and 3 and they'll be going up against the South boys who have their work cut out for them. Long shot at the buzzer. No good. The final score, the girls of Nashua High North take it over the girls from South, 58 to 37. In the first half of a doubleheader that we're reporting here on February 18, 2016. I'm John Collins for Tom King and Tim O'Neill. Thanking you for watching and saying good evening from Nashua High North, everybody.